Oh, well, good morning once again, everyone. Welcome to Everlasting Faith Fellowship, and um, this is Pastor James. And today I want to bring you a special message about controlling your anger during all these times of crisis we're going through. So let's, let's get started. You know, this has really been, to say the least, quite a year for discouraging and upsetting times, amen? I'm sure you and people you know or even see may be becoming more and more short-tempered than usual, amen? And really, it should not come as a surprise because there's many reasons to be angry right now. We started off the year with, what, being quarantined for long periods of time, massive job losses, lack of money, right? Being quarantined in our homes, can't even go out. And then more recently, the violence and the mob rule of injustice that's happening all over. But you see, anger doesn't need to win. More than ever, now is the time to look at how our faith, amen, can keep us calm even during these times of crisis. Now, anger isn't always wrong. The Bible tells us that God gets appropriately angry himself. I can only imagine he's a little mad at us right now, amen, for what we're doing, how we're reacting to different things here. And the only reason we're able to experience anger is because we're created in God's image. But you see, mismanaged anger is a problem. And on top of that, it's a sin. Now, thankfully, God can help us manage our anger in the midst of crisis and chaos that's going on. So today, we're going to look at God's plan for us to help in times like we're going through right now. So the first thing we need to do is what? Realize the cost of an uncontrolled anger. You can be sure that there's a price tag on our anger. Look at Proverbs 29, verse 22. A man of wrath stirs up strife, and one given to anger causes much transgression. I'm sure you've seen this happen in your life or in the lives of others. So let's look at specific ways anger will cost us and the ones we love. Now the book of Proverbs lists a variety of troubles that are caused by anger. Let's go there, Proverbs 14 and 29. Whoever is slow to anger has great understanding. But he who has a hasty temper, they're fools. In other words, the Bible says. And in Proverbs 14 and 17, a man who's quick to anger, he acts foolishly. And a man of evil devices is what? He's hated. Proverbs 11 and 29, whoever troubles his own household, they're going to inherit the wind, and the fool will be servant to who? The wise of heart. So in other words, anger leads to what? Broken relationships, doesn't it? Causing problems all over, all over the world. Anger isn't worth the price we're going to pay for it. The next thing we need to do is resolve to manage our anger. What does that require? It requires us to make a decision. That's right. You can let your anger continue to hurt yourself and others. So it's time to quit saying, oh, you know, some people say, I can't control my anger. This is just too much. No, you need to be honest with yourself. Because with God's help, your anger is, in fact, controllable. <clears throat> Look at Proverbs 29 and 11. Fools, they're the ones that vent their anger. But what does a wise person do? They quietly hold it back. So you need to prepare in advance how to respond correctly to situations that are going to make you angry. And if you say, I'm going to just wait till next time, <clears throat> you're going to fail. So what else do we need to do? 
We need to reflect before we start acting like a fool. In other words, think before you open that mouth. Amen? Don't simply respond without thinking. James wrote his book to people who were experiencing crisis and difficulty and trials in their life. Sound familiar? Isn't that what we're going through right now? Look at James chapter 1, verse 19. <clears throat> James says, listen, understand this, y'all. Brothers and sisters, you've got to be quick to listen. But you've got to be slow to use that mouth and speak, slow to get angry. He says, human anger, it don't produce the righteousness that God is desiring from us. So in other words, when people feel that if you are listening to them, what does it do? It reduces their frustration, eases their hurt. Anger control is really what? Controlling your mouth, right? You tame your temper by taming your tongue. Maybe I should say that again. You tame your temper by taming that tongue. How about this? It's time to release your anger in appropriate ways. Because anger isn't necessarily the problem. Check it out. That's right. It only becomes a problem when it's released inappropriately. Amen? Let's go back to God's Word. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. Don't what? Sin. Uh-oh. By doing what? Letting your anger control you. Uh-oh. So I guess it is a sin then to let our anger control us. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. This particular scripture will save your marriage. I always tell married folks that are getting married, here's one thing you can remember to keep everything cool. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. Solve that, that whatever that problem is before you go to sleep, amen? Otherwise, you're going to wake up the next day still angry. Now, unfortunately, many of us express anger in ways that actually move us further away from the goal. If we want our hurts healed, our, our frustrations resolved, our fears relieved, sinful anger really just gets in the way. So what's the best way to deal with anger? First of all, don't, don't repress it. Why? Because that'll lead to depression. And secondly, though, don't express it in an inappropriate way <clears throat> like sarcasm, hatred, or violence towards others, which is happening right now. It's not solving anything. It's actually making everything worse. Instead, confess your anger. That's right. Let people know you're upset. But let them know in a loving way. It's much easier to deal with fear or frustration than it is with anger. So another thing we have to do is retrain our mind. Why? Because our thoughts determine really our emotions. That's right. Our emotions determine what we're going to do next. And if you want to break the habit of anger, you need to change the way you think. Now, unfortunately, when you were young, you probably learned how to get angry through interaction with other folks. You may have watched and learned as it was really modeled for you by others. But the good news is, that's okay. You can unlearn this behavior. That's right. Let's go back to God's Word, Romans 12 and 2. It's another important scripture. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. Isn't that what's happening right now? People are seeing other people ride and do all crazy stuff, and they're just getting in on the bandwagon. The Bible says, don't do that. Don't copy the behavior and customs of the world, but let God, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you'll learn to know how God's will for you is. What's good pleasing, and perfect in His eyes. How about this? Ask God 
to fill you with his love. God's love is the only solution to transforming us from angry folks into peaceful people. Amen? Let's go to God's word again. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. Love is patient. It's kind. It doesn't envy or boast. It's not arrogant. It's not rude. It don't insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. Wow. Sounds like the opposite of what we're all doing now, isn't it? But when we're filled with God's love, then anger is not going to be ruling us anymore. Who's behind all that anger? Brother Satan, isn't it? We know Christ is not behind it. Our relationship with Christ greatly influences our ability to master anger in our lives. God's love can change us even in the midst of this global calamity, amen? Listen, brothers and sisters, my challenge to you during the rest of this year is to let God work on managing that anger. It's been a tough year already, right? Coronavirus, lockdowns, loss of employment and freedom. And then what happens? Trouble in the streets, violence, destruction, murders, destruction of historical monuments, people beginning to hate each other. But God uses times like these to form your character. Because as anger explodes around you, don't look at it as a chance to join in on the unrest because it seems like it's the right thing to do. No. Remember Satan, Satan wants you to do just that. Instead, you need to see it as an opportunity to let God's peace shine through you. I'm going to close today by reading some scriptures. And it's about God's peace. And we need to be aware of it. Romans 5 and 1. Therefore, since we have been what? Made right in God's sight by faith then we have peace, peace, right, with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. So do you think he wants us to be people of disorder? No. If we're supposed to be more like him, God, he's not a God of disorder, a God of peace as in all meetings of God's holy people. Philippians 4 and 6. Don't worry about all that's going on about the virus. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Thank Him for what He has done. Then you will experience what? God's peace. And that exceeds anything that we can understand. His peace will guard your heart and your mind as you live in Christ Jesus. Galatians 6 and 16. May God's peace and mercy be upon all who live by this principle because they are what? New people of God. See, sometimes we let the wrong people influence us. Don't let our friends, our politicians, our groups of supposedly people helping others when they're really not. Slogans, signs, actions. Don't let that provoke your anger towards other people. Remember, your Lord and Savior is Jesus Christ. Your Lord and Savior is not Satan. Don't be listening to what he's got people doing, amen? Because you are the one who's in control of you. Don't let other people control you. You might think it's cool, but it ain't cool to be part of anything that's against what God has instructed us to be, amen? Our friends aren't going to be the one to judge us when it comes that time, are they? God is going to judge us. We need to control our anger during this time of crisis, amen? We need to control it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for 
being with us through all these things that we're going through. Sometimes we lose faith and we think you're not here. You're not saying, Lord, what's, how come you don't do something? You are doing something. We just have to let you do it. We have to stop doing what's against your will, Lord. Stop making all these terrible comments about people, hurting people, physically destroying things that belong to others. This is not your way, Lord. You will bring about change through love and peace, not through these crazy actions of demanding this and that, changing names on things that have nothing to do with the real, pro the real problem. Help us to get through this, Lord. We thank you. We need you in our lives. And help us to let others know to, to rely on you, Lord, to turn their lives over to you and not over to crowd rule. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we thank you and we pray that you will be safe this week. Change who's controlling you. Change who's controlling your mind. You're the one who's in control. Not others, not any groups, not any people, not any signs, not any anything. Not Facebook, not Twitter. You know what's right and you know what's wrong. And you know when you're doing something that God does not like, it's time to make a change. Amen. And that's why we need to let others know about the life-saving thing of Jesus Christ. That they too may allow him to come into their hearts and minds so that Satan will not be controlling their, what they're doing. Amen. Thank you and God bless. Hope to see you next time.